DNA Sports, Dave and Joe. We're actually on a field here, so we're going to follow up what we did at the last podcast. We're at McGuane Park, beautiful Chicago, South Side, 29th and Halsted. And we're going to talk about what we mentioned about pitching, which was 30 MLB coaches talk about uh, never pushing off the rubber. And if they do talk about that, they get fired. So. <laughs> We're going to talk about the difference. What you see in a lot of youth teams is guys worried about throwing hard and they forget about the lower half, which is really the most important thing because your power comes from the ground up. So if you're inefficient or flawed with the lower body, you're going to not throw as hard, you're not going to be as accurate, and you're not going to be a good pitcher, basically. So what we talked about is heel landing first. and what a lot of kids do is they just go like this and they land on the heel and they stop everything. They stop everything, okay? The other thing we're going to talk about is pushing off versus pivoting. Okay, and when you push off, and Joe's going to demonstrate this too, so righty, lefty, whatever, because he's a lefty, and pushing off, your body gets way ahead of your arm. Okay, really, when you're... When you're on the mound and when you land, you should be here. A lot of kids are down here, they're way late. That's what we talk about late. Plus, if you're pushing off, you're getting your force from your back leg, from the inside of your back leg, and that's not the biggest part of your leg. So, obviously, another inefficient way of pitching. So, if you're gonna do it the right way, first of all, you hide the ball, and you get into your motion as quickly as possible, pivot, And then, you know, with the standard leg lift, and you keep on going, like Joe said back there, fast to slow or whatever, but you should be always moving and not hesitating. So you're up here like this, and you land on the ball of your foot. And if you have trouble with that, Pat Murphy, our coaching staff, we teach. If you can't land with your heel, Point your toe to the ground. Point your toe to the ground. That will help you land on the ball of your foot. Yes. And Maddox, Greg Maddox, uh, Hall of Fame pitcher, he landed flat. That's all. That's also good. As long as your front knee bends. Okay. And there's a reason why your front knee should bend. Soft landing. Okay. So you don't jar your motion, and you're able to pivot through, and then stand on your leg. Okay. It's a lot similar to hitting where land softly and then you straighten up. You want to rotate around that straight front leg and you just want to bend here, okay? And then straighten up after you flip your hip, show the laces, whatever, okay? And I know this is technical for all you coaches, but it's a hip shoulder separation. And, and here's the big thing, I think. When every, everybody's always trying to throw harder, when you're landing on your heel, you just can't throw harder. You're losing all of your power. Let me demonstrate here. So when I leg lift and I go toward the plate, if I land on my heel, my hips are completely open and I'm completely spent. So when I go to push off, I really have nothing open with my lower body. I'm going to have to try to force the ball through with my arm. So it's going to be all arm, no legs. One, you're going to create injuries. You're not going to get the most out of your delivery. It's going to be inefficient. So you think about landing it's here or it's flat foot right and now I have everything intact in terms of my balance I can still pivot off of my back leg my arms in a good position and I can rotate and extend versus that foot we talked about his foot being as high as his head after he releases and that's exactly what I want to do it again Joe okay so let me show you the wrong way he's in line right here okay once, get, get back in your regular motion, okay? No, get wind up? Yeah, wind up. Okay, his left foot's there, okay? His right foot should land in line with that when he, when, he, when, he, when he lands, okay? Or slightly to the right to make sure his back hip gets through the ball just like as I hit him, okay? So let's do it. Okay, well, let me show you the wrong way first. Absolutely. This is a heel land. And he's... And I'm spent. He's so spent. now it's going to be all arm. Gonna have to force it through and, and I'm likely gonna be inaccurate and that's um, to be one guy that really had a, a, a short major league career that should have had a 
big career was Mark Pryor. He was a heel lander, and he was all upper body and his arm. And eventually, through a lot of, you know, he, he got hurt too much. And all, always because, I think, because he didn't use his lower body efficiently. Yeah, I mean, everyone says it's an unnatural motion, and you're literally tearing up fibers in your arm every time you throw. And to be throwing 95 miles an hour, that's definitely wearing your arm down. So we need to get the most out of our legs. Okay, what, what Joe said about... Um, He's always spent. Okay, he doesn't. They don't use his hips correctly when he heel lands. The hips stop, and he jars his own motion. So it really, it really disrupts his his uh, his arm slot. Okay, so if he lands on his heel, sometimes the arm slot moves. And we always talk about the arm slot. Once you set it, it's got to be all the way through. You can't you can't lower. You can't you can't get it higher. Okay. But once you set that arm slot, and when you land on your heel, the arm slot is disrupted. Okay. So now, the correct way. I'm here, my timing's good, I point my toe down, and as I land, I'm on time. Look where my arm is, and look how I'm on the ball of my foot still. And he can, and he can hit any spot right there because he's on time. I can pivot out still and extend. And then he shows the laces. A lot of you people talk about laces. We talk about flipping that hip, which is like that, and almost like a karate chop, a reverse karate chop, and his and his back foot was as high as his head. That's a perfect 